At some stage in your video career, you're probably gonna be asked to shoot some formal head and shoulders type interviews or medium close-up style of shots. Here is the way I approach it and what I found works best for me. Hi, I'm Grant and I am currently on a three-day shoot shooting classic talking head style shots for a TV channel launching which is profiling local candidates running for our council. So I thought I'd take you behind the scenes here and show you how I set up for classic interview style shots. So I will switch over to a handheld wobbly camera and I'll show you the setup I'm using right here. As in any video project, it time, it, the context depends on what you're being asked to shoot it for, and in this case, it is very traditional head and shoulders style shooting for our local, or profiling candidates for our local council by-elections. So, the project has been organized for me, and the venue is this boardroom that I'm currently standing in here in, a, um, in Queenstown in a local um, lawyer's office, actually. And so when I approached these projects, my initial thoughts were basically, the space, have I got enough space to shoot these interviews and sound quality of the room. So, let's have a look. As you can see here, the space is not too bad, even though I'm showing you this on a wide lens. It is a classic sort of a boardroom and we, the first thing I did was move the boardroom table over to the side so I had a bit more room and I shut these blinds because I want to control the light as much as possible. You'll also see here, I took this picture off the wall. The picture was hanging up here, but it, unfortunately the height was kind of just, it was just, it sat quite wrong in behind the people when we were interviewing them. So we took this down because I wanted it as neutral a background as I can, or as I could get. The next thing I thought about here is basically where I'm gonna seat the person we are shooting or the talent, and I want them to get them off the wall. You wanna move them out as far as you can away from the wall. And I would actually like to have done it more, but I was kind of running out of space in this room once I had my camera and my other chair set up. Lighting wise, I went for a two light setup. The, my main or my key light here is a daylight balanced fluorescent light with a soft box, which I always finds quite pleasing on people's or the look of the subjects that you're shooting. And I had a backlight up in the corner here, which is a small one by one LED, again daylight balanced, as just a little bit of backlight on the subject on the back of their hair and their shoulder to give them a little bit of separation off the wall. Next up, audio wise, this room, small rooms, you're always gonna struggle with audio. So generally, if I'm shooting inside, I just about always will try and use a lapel mic like how I've got here to try and reduce room noise or echo and the bounciness of the, the audio in small spaces. So I'm running a lapel mic here, which is actually my Sennheiser G3 radio mic kit, which I then put on the talent, and the receiver unit goes on my camera, which is the Canon ADD, which I'm using in this case. If you're using a radio mic, and now you can with the Canon ATD, always monitor your audio. So I've got a pair of headphones here, which the Canon ATD now allows me to monitor with the audio that I'm recording, which the Canon 70D, which I'm shooting this on, um, unfortunately doesn't. Lens-wise, the classic portrait or interview style lens is around 80 to 85 millimeters, and I have got a Canon 17 to 55 f 2.8, and I'm running it right at the 55 millimeter, which is about 88, an equivalent 35 millimeter focal distance of 88 millimeters. And this will give you a little bit of a zoomed in effect, which is a lot more flattering on people when shooting them. I also wanted a limited depth of field, so I am running this lens at f2.8 and adjusting my ISO for setting exposure. In this case, it's between ISO 250 and ISO 300, and I wouldn't really want to go any higher than that. Also, while we're talking about the lens, to be honest, I actually would have preferred a more zoomed in lens, because you can see here the distance between me and the subject's chair is not that great for me, and that is on the full zoom of 55. So probably a better interview lens would almost be something like either the 24 to 105 or 70 to 200. Because of this lens, I would struggle to get a close-up shot from here without moving the camera right the way forward. It's fine for this, but more zoom would have possibly been even better. 
Other points to note here is that you also want your interviewer's chair as close to your lens as possible, and this way that the, the interviewee, their eye line, is almost at camera. It's slightly off camera, but you want that person sitting as close to your lens as possible. If they're too far away, your interviewee's eye line will be a little bit funny, so close to the lens as possible. Another thing that I always do and you want to watch out for is you want to set your tripod height with your camera essentially at eye level to your interviewee or slightly above, not too far above and definitely not below and that is a kind of a natural looking eye line for your shots. Also quite often I'll adjust my height slightly for the size of the person sitting in the chair here. So if they're tall I will adjust my camera up so the eye line is still pretty much direct or slightly above and if they're short then I'll drop it down. As I said earlier, I've actually manually set the white balance on this camera to 5000K. I'm editing this and I want all the shots to look the same. I don't want to use auto white balance which might change between the shots. I've set 5000K and that's worked out pretty well because I know that these lights, my fluoro tube and my LED run a bit cool. So I am happy with 5000K. Um, and if I need to adjust it in post, then I just need to adjust it once and apply it to the, all my clips. And that's it, those are the main things that I look for or the procedure I use when shooting a classic style MCU talking head style of video interviews. I hope you found something useful there. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. The video took you know, pretty much three years to film. Uh, it took about eight months to edit.